Hello guys, it's Commander Hawk here, and today I am bringing you a video talking more about Battlefront, Battlefield I'll get in talking to, and just kind of talk about video games, really. So first off, I'm using a class that is honestly my favorite in the game. I've got the explosive shot, which I don't even use that much, but it's I don't really use much of these. Honestly, the personal shield would probably, personal shield would probably be better. But I just have so many explosive shots. I have like 160 or something. that I kind of just want to get rid of them sometimes. Anyway. Then I've got the back to bomb level 2. I just got killed by a thermal detonator right there. Trying to get the pod back. But the back to bomb level 2. It's r really, really OP. And then I've got the jet pack so I can move in and out of cover faster. And just get back into the battle faster. And then for the weapon, I've got the RT. I forgot the full name of the gun, but it's Spray and Prey. It's one of the Spray and Preys, and combined with some Mandalorian perk, which I'm using, is extremely overpowered due to you just gun people down absolutely instantly when you have damage on you when you're at perk 2. Then with perk 3, you combine with the back to bomb, you just don't die. Anyway, that's enough for the class, I guess. Actually, one more quick thing. I'm playing Drop Zone on... I, I forgot the map. It's Tatooine, I'm going to say. One of the Tatooine maps. I forgot the exact name of it. But, anyway. Battlefield 1 released its trailer, and it looks awesome. Way better than Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. This trailer, which has, like, at the time I'm making this video, it has, like, a million dislikes a bit over so yeah that's it seems like most people agree with me that the trailer looked pretty bad the epic moments and it weren't that epic while battlefield one on the other hand that trailer looks amazing world war one looks amazing that's as any war i'd rather have have a game based on world war one would be probably number two world war two would be above it but World War One has just a ton of different environments that you could play in, kind of like the Star Wars universe. It's made, it's gonna be made by well, it's being I guess made by Dice, which same people who made Battlefront. I will most likely get the game, and if I do get it, I will definitely record it. And I don't know, I may do a review on the game right when I get my hands on it or something. Listen that opening week, I hopefully will, but that's, I think it's released in like October, it, or November, it's way back there, but, when he's up 1-1, sometimes it's a game, I don't play the objective too well, but, I kind of try and stick by it, but I was mostly just going for the, when I was just doing this game, I was just grinding, because I'm, I'm trying to get to level 40, so I can get the really cool skins, rather than just default ones. But continuing with Battlefield 1, I mean, World War 1 is awesome because the vehicles, no walk-ons. I always, it'd be kind of stupid if there were walk-ons because obviously they weren't in World War 1. But I don't know. I don't like walk-on weapons because it feels like it takes a bit of skill out of using that weapon. Such as the only real Call of Duty game I had a ton of fun with was Black Ops 2. And like the target finder took absolutely no skill to use. Anybody... If you played Black Ops 2, you know what I'm talking about. Anybody could smack this thing on the LMG, and you're going positive for a game. Which, I just don't like stuff like that. And I think it will be was the how good graphics DICE makes. Just World War One games with the graphics that DICE has will look absolutely amazing. The trailer looked absolutely amazing. The forest map, which is probably the Italian Alps. A map around there looks just gorgeous. The desert map doesn't look too bad either, especially for a desert. I mean, what really can you can't do all too much for a desert to make it look great, but they did it as much as they could. And then the other map is the kind of muddy map. I forgot the name of the battle, but it's probably based on a battle where, or it was over a couple months, or really, but. Where the British, I believe, is... I know the British were involved, and you might have just heard my mower. My dad's outside mowing, but... Where the British were involved, and there's a lot of mud that made the fights a lot more 
deadly and slow and trench warfare got really bad then and another thing well there obviously is trenches it's World War One, and they showed it in the trailer but it doesn't look like there isn't too much trench which is kind of good because trench warfare would be I think everybody agrees a really boring game if you just sat in two trenches and tried to charge across it, it would be fun at first but it would get really boring if ideally all the maps were just trenches that you tried to charge across. Game mode, I'm interesting to see what they could add. We saw the airship, I believe is what it's called. It's not technically called the Zeppelin. What I've learned is that the Zeppelin is a form of this airship, but it looks huge in the game. And what I'm hoping is kind of like a base that you spawn on. And then when you die, you respawn up there, you like parachute or some kind of way down most likely parachuting I think that'd be epic parachute down and there's these it's kind of like a walker assault game mode in this game where there's different anti-air points I guess that you try and stop them from getting and every time you die you just respawn back up there and if they destroy it your team loses and if it gets to a certain point it will drop a bomb because the Germans and I think the Brits maybe use it to bomb during World War One, to drop bombs on, I don't know, like a base or something. It'd be different on every map, but it just drop bombs and make you win the game. So that's my idea on what the Zeppelin could be and what I really hope it, well not the Zeppelin, the airship could be and what I hope it is because that would be epic in my opinion. And then I go for a little quick claim right here. So while they're distracting on my teammates and then just right there the perfect example of how fast you just mow people down you do not have to be very accurate with this gun either but that's why the ideal reason for chewing this with Mandalorian you don't have to be accurate you don't have to really do that much except shoot in their general direction and you're gonna get the kill if you're on Mandalorian perk 3 and anyway, continue, continuing with Battlefield 1, I think another cool game mode, would, they showed something with trains, I don't know what they're going to do with that, but another cool game mode would be just kind of like a pretty huge map, which we believe they're going to make, because they made some huge maps in Battlefront, and some other Battlefield games usually have huge maps, but some game mode where like there's a tower or something and you kind of try and take it kind of like a king of the hill game mode they don't have anything like that in battlefront but i think that would be really cool and then well i personally i've only played a couple battlefield games they were pretty very early ones and they weren't for very long i just played them at a friend's house who had them on console but so i would kind of be kind of be new to this battlefield when I get the game but from the looks of it and it's by DICE it's probably going to play a lot like Battlefront but also at the same time with World War One weapons it looks like they're really emphasizing melee which I think would be really cool and hopefully the system's better than it is in Battlefront because it's a Battlefront melee system is just horrendous but I think it'd be cool if there's like they showed up mace and a couple other melee weapons in the trailer. I, I think it'd be really cool to just fight with those sometimes. And tanks, from what we've heard, it takes a kind of like a team to actually be efficient with them, which would be pretty cool because it's not just one person who grabs a tank and starts destroying. You gotta have a team effort to. In the tanks aren't even that powerful, and then. Horses are in the game. That's really cool. I mean, just think, there's not really too much war with horses in them. At least, um, with this revolutionary. And I believe the only, yeah, the only war with horses and tanks would be World War One. I. I guess World War Two horses may have been used a little bit, but other than that, it was primarily tanks in World War Two with the Panzers and. The original U.S. tanks, M something, I forgot them, M1s maybe, but 
Yeah, this is really the only war with horses and tanks. I mean, like, horses played a huge deal in ancient wars like Rome, Greece, stuff like that. The cavalry always was very important in Napoleon, Napoleonic wars, but they're just never, like, against tanks. This is kind of really the last battle that horses made a huge impact on, and I, I don't know why I called it a battle, a war, that horses really changed. Like World War II, like I said earlier, they may have been involved, I'm pretty sure they were, but it just wasn't very big of a deal. And also what really surprised me about Battlefield 1 was what looked like naval combat, which I think would be really cool to have, to do a sh fleet battle in a Battlefield 1 era. Especially because while most people don't think of World War One and they don't think of fleets, but it's actually a huge deal of the U-boats and the British blockading the Germans, and they just played a huge impact in the war. And then I think fleet battles would kind of set the stepping stones for if they do make a World War Two game, which I'm expecting and hoping they will. World War II, especially in the Pacific, had a lot of fleet battles going on. Midway was a huge one. And then Pearl Harbor was, I guess, kind of a fleet battle due to the aircraft carrier deployed the ships that bombed it. But their fleet battles were in Navy were huge in World War II. So I think if they get a good system in World War One, they could carry that over and... I think Navy battles will be a lot of fun, controlling huge cannons. Hopefully, there's some kind of, like, boarding ships that you can board to get on the other team's ships. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Battlefield 1. I think it will be really cool to go back in time. I think they could actually, like, that they're probably going to do, make, like, a series to go back to a modern area. And then maybe go back to the futuristics once they've got all the way there. I don't know what that body's doing right there. That was kind of funny but I think it'd be cool to go next World War 2 then maybe go into uh, I don't know Korean Wars obviously there's not too much in between there but the Korean Wars would be hard to do due to the fact that it wasn't like World War 1 or World War 2 where everybody's involved it's really the US North Korea South Korea and China kind of backing them North Korea while the U.S. backed South Korea. So, I don't know. That might be interesting to have a Korean War. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Battlefield 1 and what they could do after it. Anyway, guys, if the gameplay's about to end and I'm just going to let it finish. If you guys like this video, please subscribe if you want to see more like this. I was just checking out chat to see if I was being accusated or anything. But, anyway... Goodbye, and remember, Han shot first.